Hello, I'm very happy to be here and thank for the invitation. You know, it's not often that when you are hooked, as our moderator says, to climate, just to get out the climate bubble. And I feel that's the right moment to do it. Paris was really about aligning objective uh, of many actors, not only governments. Uh, local governments, businesses, civil society, and NGO gathered around the same goal to get the more ambitious uh, agreement possible and to really rally together, build coalitions. That worked. And of course, in the Paris thinking, the idea was we have to build a resilient framework, something that can resist political shock. So of course now we are confronted with this political shock, with the decision of the Trump administration to opt out from the Paris Agreement. And I think we see uh, an enormous movement of, again, local governments, NGO business and states together with governments proving that building coalition in such a way is certainly the right way to promote global issues and global cooperation. I tell you that because we have done a lot. It was a long work to get on the climate and energy issues this type of coalitions, to know where to go, where could be our goal, limiting temperature well below 2 degrees C and, and hopefully 1.5. And we had that vision, but it was a long learning exercise. And I'm very pleased to be here because at that stage and until Paris, the food and agriculture was not in the landscape. It could not because many governments didn't want this issue to be in because of the complexity of the issue. Because as well, many were feeling very defensive about the capacity of agriculture to contribute to the problem. And to, and to be part of the solution. So there were a defensiveness there. So everything but agriculture, like we had some years ago, everything but emission from transport, international transport or maritime, meaning you have loopholes that we have progressively to, to, to really close. And the good thing is, uh, so we now are beginning to talk about that in the climate talks, to have even countries like New Zealand or Argentina Brazil, to just to speak about how we can have agriculture, land use, contribute positively, and recognizing of the difficulties and the challenges. And maybe it points to a different type of agriculture, a different type of production, and now growingly a different type of food consumption. That's why I feel I'm, I'm very happy that now these communities began to talk to each other. Certainly food is a very complex issue. Many actors, big companies, small companies, fa small farmers, consumers, trade, a global trade which is really impressive. But and now we, when we are in the implementation phase of Paris Agreement, we have to look at this sector too and to see how these communities can work together. Additionally, and it may be the more important element, food and health is a way to connect this very global issue which very, very often is expressed through big numbers, targets, minus 80% of emission reduction by 2050 in some countries, minus 20 in others, 2020 targets or 2030. That's big abstract numbers. But now in the implementation phase, we are talking about what do we do with transport, with energy, with uh, buildings. And we should talk about what we do with food and agriculture and nutrition. And what is the best way to connect to citizens, to their way of life, to their connect, personal connection to this, such a big problem? And I think food is really a very good, together with health, channels where we can talk about what does these numbers mean for everyday life and for the capacity of transforming deeply our economy and our societies to fit within the limits of the planet. And I, I know you have been listening to bright presentation of what these planet boundaries are. And so I, I deeply feel that that's the right moment, not only to talk about the technicalities of how agriculture can be a fantastic uh, activity of, for sequestration of carbon, or, <coughs> or really having alternative sources for the chemical industry, 
uh, or for the fashion, as I talked with some of you early on, but as well with connecting the way of life, the behavior, the culture, the diversity of these cultures. And it's complex how we explain that we should not go in a globalization type of consumption model, but something very different, diversify, but at the same time understanding how we contribute in this global atmosphere and for this global cause. I think we have a lot to do, a lot to do in the food sector to construct this coalition. You have a lot of controversies there, and I'm sure you have been witnessing this in this discussion. How we have positive coalition between the big companies that transform food in the value chain, with where the small farmers who have to defend their livelihoods and may not be uh, in the same foot level playing field as the big companies do. That's a big power politics, very important ones. And uh, in a way, energy was more simple. You have uh, many big actors, small ones, new ones, but you don't have this asymmetry of power we are recognizing in the food sector. And I really think that's a fascinating issue exactly for that reason. How we create justice, how we, in a way, develop an idea of climate justice within this enormous amount of actors, sectors, goals, and in a way try to sim simplify this complexity at least to let people understand what should be the goal and the collective goal. And it could be on waste, it could be to go to zero waste, and for food is so important. It could be to really have a limit on, really strict limit on deforestation by now. It could be that we look for ecological intensification of the food production. It could be transforming how consumption models are phasing out or phasing down regularly our meat consumption. So we could have quite clear goals that could translate these very big goals of climate into very specific ones that relate to everyday life. So I do think that we need to begin to e establish this conversation between the health community, the climate community, and the food community. And I think uh, the, the way to connect that, in my view, and we'll try to do that throughout the work of the European Climate Foundation with many, many partners, at least to reconsider the European agriculture in the long term. Something very sort of, you look at the policy and it's exactly with good adjustment in the last 10 years, basically not responding to something compatible with Paris commitments. So we have to look at all these policies and we have to develop this long-term perspective. I know that, I think yesterday or this morning, you were uh, thinking about this a big coalition, thinking long-term for food, for land use, for oceans, I think that's exactly the right way to go. Uh, I am pushing many countries, many businesses, many local governments to display their vision for the 2050 economy, how it looks like if we are consistent with Paris. We need exactly the same thing for food and for land use. We need to know what the food production looks like and the whole the value chain from the small farmers to the consumer that will be compatible with these planet boundaries that CO2, methane and other gases are, are pointing to. And we have to recognize what, what are these limits. And the limits, of course, on the use of land and the fertility of the soils. So we have to be much more complex, but we have to have at the same time clear goals. So we need to establish this conversation and to tell every actor to say what your business would look like if you were compatible to Paris by 2050. What, what are the transformation are about? And I think it's good to know when we say, for example, that the emission per capita should be around two tons per capita in 2050, what does it like when it's translated to food consumption? How much liter of water, how much kilograms of energy embedded in, in the food production. We should have these targets in mind. And I think it's perfectly possible. And uh, there is so many intelligence out there and in this room that I think we are totally able to design this goal, to translate these big numbers of the planet boundaries to, in a way, targets that everyone can capture. I would be very happy to participate to that conversation, as many of you I think we, it's very urgent and to translate that in national discussion on how we conduct that transformation. And again, it will not be only government, it will be all actors, business, local authority, consumers, organization. 
That's the way, and that's the way we can integrate all this complexity, because of course we are frightened by this complexity. But that's exactly where we can find innovative solutions. Thank you.